Hey there, and welcome to Ruthful's Art Corner. I'm your host, Ruthful, also known as Ruthful LA. Check out my live stream on Twitch, follow me on Instagram, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for all kinds of art related content. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Ruthful's Art Corner. I decided that one of the things I would like to say, yay, cats in the chat. One of the things that I would like to say when folks join me in the chat or join me on the channel is welcome home. Welcome home. I know a number of other streamers, or at least some of the streamers that I watch, including a number of awesome ladies who do various types of creative endeavors, they often say welcome in. And I, I dig that. I like the vibe of that. But, you know, I feel like I'm much more of a welcome home kind of person. And is that the burner in me? The person who has for many years gone to Burning Man? It might be. That's what we say there. We say welcome home. But it might also just be how things are. You know, I think it just it just fits the vibe. Just fits the vibe. So we are here. It is Wednesday. I'm glad you could join me for today's stream. We're going to do a little bit of art news before we do some playtime with Occupy White Walls, my favorite video game. At least my favorite video game of right now. I don't know if it's my favorite video game of all time. That'd be hard to stack up. I was a huge Sonic fan when I was a youngin. And maybe at some point I will get an emulator for the computer so that I can play it on stream. Because I would enjoy that. I don't I don't know if you would enjoy that. Gotta go fast. Indeed, uh, interesting user. Gotta go fast. Zoom. I gotta get all those rings. That's, uh, that's the plan to at some point make that happen. One of my goals for today's stream, I just did it just now, is to try to say uh and um less. I've been spending the last few days teaching myself how to edit videos. Thanks so much to a bunch of really helpful YouTube tutorials and you know, Google in general. And thanks Big thanks to my partner, the mad scientist, uh, interesting user, for his help in doing basically proofreading, being my extra pair of eyes. It's, it's a crucial job. Somebody's got to do it. Thank you. Thank you for your help. I do appreciate it. So one of my big goals for today's stream is to just watch my uhs and ums, which is important for anyone who does any kind of public speaking. If you ever are involved with an organization called Toastmasters, I think that's one of the things that they will do. They will count your uhs and ums for you. You got to do a playthrough of Oregon Trail. Maybe, you know, that's not a bad idea. I could definitely potentially do a playthrough of Oregon Trail, especially since I don't have a strong memory of it. For some reason in my school, we didn't really do Oregon Trail. We did a, a game called Truckin' USA. So very similar. It's geography-based resource accumulating and, and keeping track of your, your quest. But Oregon Trail sounded a lot more fun and a lot more likely to die. You never died when you were doing truck in USA, unlike real life, when being a trucker is actually a fairly dangerous job. And we do appreciate all of the truckers out there moving the goods around the world. But a playthrough of Oregon Trail does sound like a fun idea. So write these things down if you can and let me know them later uh, so that I can stack them all up. Today is going to be another Occupy White Walls day because I do love that game and because I have several galleries to get through. Today is going to be Defected. I'm feeling really saucy and I want to keep playing after my GeForce Now server resets. Then I will probably do one of Emeralds. He joined us in the stream a couple of days ago, I think last week. Oregon versus Oregon. Yeah, you're right. I don't think I want to do a trail of organs. I'd like to do a trail that takes me to Oregon. <laughs> what we are here today to do is some art news. First some art news, then some Occupy White Walls. So let's get to it. All right. So art news time from Ruthful's Art Corner. 
So the first story we have is that the Louvre and Sotheby's are working together on a restitution study. Restitution is when the art gets returned to folks who originally owned it. And in this case, it is for works that are in the museum's collection that entered the collection between 1933 and 1945. So during the height of the Nazi regime and the Vichy regime in France. Sotheby's is sponsoring the study, which could cover some 14,000 pieces of art. Holy moly. Though they've had a restitution department since 1997, which was the first in the auction industry, the auction houses in-house experts won't be involved in the process. Not sure what's going on with that, but you know, they didn't ask me, so it's all good. Uh, in addition to footing the bill, the funds will also be put towards potential digitization efforts of the relevant research materials. So if that is something that you are interested in, hopefully it'll be available to the internet at large in the future. It's very interesting from many standpoints, art that gets stolen in any fashion, whether it was imperial colonial expansion, whether it was regimes, you know, what do you do when somebody else now owns the art, not the person who stole it? How does it get back to the original owner? So Sotheby's department, they have apparently mediated a lot of those types of conversations through the research that they do and through just trying to work together between the original heirs and the current owners and the, the buyers and all of that stuff. It's it's a thorny, thorny topic, and my hat is off to them for trying to figure it out. The sponsorship deal marks the auction house's first formal partnership with a major institution on the restitution front, which was said by a spokesperson for Sotheby's Paris in an email statement to Art News, which is an art news website that I get a lot of my art news from. Next story we have... Tracy Emin, who is an artist that I am a big fan of, she said, take it down. She is particularly unhappy with the current residents of 10 Downing Street, that's the administration over in the UK, and she's had a piece of art called More Passion. It's a neon artwork, which I'll show on the next slide. And it's been on display since she donated it to the National Collection at the request of PM David Cameron in 2010. So they've had it 12 years, 11 years, somewhere in there. You do the math. She disagrees strongly with the current administration and their handling of Brexit and the pandemic, among other topics. I believe the thing that the straw that broke the camel's back was the recent news about Boris Johnson attending a party while the UK had very strict lockdown rules. So it's been a big story over there. She's particularly disgusted by it. She's not really a fan of him and his, his administration anyway. So she said, I don't want my art hanging there anymore. I think the actual quote was, I think they need less passion, or I think more passion is the last thing that they need. Now she doesn't, she's not asking for it to be returned, she just wants the piece to remain in the collection, hanging somewhere else. Here it is, this is what it looks like. More passion. I also shared that on my Instagram uh, a couple hours ago, which I found on her account, the Tracy Emmons Studio account, and there it is. And I just love neon art. Maybe it's because I live in Los Angeles and we have a lot of neon signs here. My partner and I went to a really cool museum in Las Vegas. If you're ever in Las Vegas, the Neon Museum has a bunch of old signs from the Vegas Strip and they're huge and they're mostly down on the ground and so you're like walking along and you're looking up at this huge sign. It's really, really neat and it's an outdoor space. So if you're in Vegas during COVID for whatever reason, during this crazy pandemic time that we are in, it's a safe place to go. Definitely would recommend going at night just because neon is more dramatic at night. But a lot of Tracy Emmons pieces, even if they are neon, they are still impactful regardless of what the lighting is like. So I'm going to share some links very quickly in the chat. The first one I'm sharing is just the art itself and it's 
artuk.org. They have a listing for it, and you can kind of see it in a really big, blown up version. And then the second link I am sharing is the Art News article that I was reading earlier that gave me all this information and that has her quotes and goes a little more in depth into the story. So, there you have it. I will share those links in the description on the YouTube video when the time comes. Our next story, Gentileschi paintings at auction. Ooh. Now we've got uh, Artemisia Gentileschi. We did a whole art history segment on her last week, possibly two weeks ago. What is time? Two pieces are going up for sale tomorrow, January 27th. So tomorrow as of press time. And here they are. One of them is a Susanna and the Elders. The other, and that one was painted circa 1638. And the other one is Portrait of a Seated Lady, and that one was circa 1620. Now, key thing to know, together they are expected to bring 3.8 million to 5.5 million dollars. So, wow. If you have seen our past episode, the art history episode on Artemisia Gentileschi, the 17th century Baroque Italian painter, you may remember that she had done a different version of Susanna and the Elders, and that one was painted after the trial with, after an assault that she experienced, and this one was painted later in her life. It's a scene that she returned to a number of times, and recent uh, feminist art historians think that it, it was one of her ways of reclaiming her story and of really, really centralizing Susanna in that moment and kind of uh, uh, telling her story over and over again. It's interesting, uh, we talked in one of our recent segments about, I think it was one of the viewers, JC mentioned that they love how different artists will do their interpretation of different scenes. And I love how one artist will do multiple interpretations of different scenes. And in a way, it's almost like early memes, right? It's, it's that recycling of an image or of an idea. And at the time, especially when people were not literate in words, they were literate in pictures and they could get a lot of information from what was in front of them in the painting they knew they knew what story it was supposed to be they knew where in the story it was supposed to be if things were different you know it, they picked up on it and and the way that our society does memes now kind of like how artists did art back in the day and how they still continue to do art since today's artists are often in conversation with artists from the past. Next story, I think this is our last story, but we'll find out. Uh, Wiley at the Huntington. Now, Kehende Wiley, we have mentioned, I think on almost every one of these art news and art history segments. And the key thing to know here, one of his pieces, has been at the Huntington Library, which is an art museum here in the Los Angeles area, since October of last year. Here is a quick little bit of backstory behind it. Henry and Arabella Huntington, the Huntingtons, acquired Thomas Gainsborough's The Blue Boy in 1921, and to celebrate the centennial anniversary of that acquisition, the Huntington Library unveiled Kahende Wiley's portrait of a young gentleman and face them off in the same gallery back in October 2021. It is still there. I believe actually that Blue Boy is on loan to the National Gallery in London at the moment, um, which is unfortunate because I believe I'm going to be going to the Huntington Library with my fam who's currently in town making my life hectic and wonderful and all those good things. And I had hoped to see them both. Sounds like I'm only going to get to see this one, but hey, I'm down. So here you can see on my right, this is the portrait of a young gentleman done by Kehende Wiley. Like a lot of his other paintings, it has that rich texture background, that, that bright, floral, busy, fun, kind of hectic background. 
And if you are not familiar with the Blue Boy painting, sadly, I forgot to include it in this PowerPoint, but the pose that the figure is in is very, very similar. So it's, it's definitely in direct conversation with that piece of art. And it was neat that the curatorial staff decided to pair them together. Now, Wiley grew up in Los Angeles. He's a hometown boy. And he has referenced the influence that the Huntington and its collections had on his formation as an artist. He even took art classes there as a young student. So that's pretty neat that his painting is now hanging there. Like, I mean, you know, as a youngster, as a young art student, what greater dream is there? Here's a quote by him. I loved the Huntington's galleries. The paintings by Joshua Reynolds, Thomas Gainsborough, and John Constable were some of my favorites, Wiley said. I was taken by their imagery, their sheer spectacle, and of course, their beauty. When I started painting, I started looking at their technical proficiency, the manipulation of paint, color, and composition. These portraits are hyper real with the detail on the face finely crafted and the brushwork, the clothing, and the landscape fluid and playful. Since I felt somewhat removed from the imagery, personally and culturally, I took a scientific approach and had an aesthetic fascination with these paintings. That distance gave me a removed freedom. Later, I started thinking about issues of desire, objectification, and fantasy in portraiture and, of course, colonialism so these these artworks they informed him they inspired him and they made him think you know they gave him a lot of food for thought so the last thing i really wanted to talk about today during the art news segment is a quick retraction this one is from last week I mean, the retraction is happening now. The story happened last week. The Obama portraits are no longer at LACMA. I was wrong. I misspoke. They were at LACMA. And the Black American Portraits exhibit that is currently still at LACMA that was curated to complement these portraits, these portraits, that is still up. What, what is no longer there are these two specific portraits. And that's because they are on tour, as I said during that segment. And the LA leg of the tour was up. It was over. I snailed my fault. So I missed out on my opportunity to see them in person. But someday, someday, I'll go to DC and I'll see them at the National Portrait Gallery. So here's the text above me. The Obama Portrait Store has moved on from LACMA. The art of Kahinde Wiley and Amy Sherald is on view at the High Museum of Art in Atlanta, Georgia, until March 2022. The tour's final stop will be the Museum of Fine Arts Houston in Houston, Texas from April 3rd to May 30th, 2022. After that, going back to the National Portrait Gallery in DC. Now, I wasn't able to put my little identifier cards, my artist cards up next to these pieces of art because I wanted them to be as big as possible so that you could see them in all of their glory. So let me just identify them for you. The one of Barack Obama, that one was done by Kahinde Wiley. And then the one of Michelle Obama was done by Amy Sherald. And they are huge, they are Huge. No, sorry. They are massive, though. They are very big in scale, and so I imagine they are very striking. And you probably, if you have been watching our segments in the past, you probably were able to, to pick out which one was Wiley's just given the background, right? It's fun. It's, te it's textured. There's a lot going on. And yet, for all its busyness, the main subject, boom, there it is. Oop, there it is. So, real quick, just like to tack this on the end of every art news segment. I am trying to get to 50 followers. That is the magic number that Twitch has set. So, I'm aiming for it. I'm going to be doing a sticker giveaway when I reach 50 followers. So, here's how it works. Sorry the text is so tiny. I will try to make it better in future streams. So once I hit 50, I am going to do a random drawing and I'm going to pick two followers, 
to receive a sticker pack. The sticker pack will contain five stickers. Some of them will be this one that is above me right here. And a few of them will be from an Etsy shop that I like to support another artist, a fellow artist. And so, yeah, if you want to get stickers, help me grow this channel. How can you help? Well, you can become a follower yourself and you can share me with your, with your network. If you know other people who like art, who like to talk about art, who want to talk about art, that's the key thing. Or at least want to hear me talk about art. They gotta want some kind of discussion about art to happen in order to want to follow the channel. But I think there are a lot of people out there on it. In fact, I am banking on it. I think this Artsy Farts community can continue to grow because I think there are a lot of people out there who want to support their fellow artists. If you are not that familiar with the content that I'm going to be having on this channel, I am planning to start in February setting up some interviews with some fellow artists and you know, get, get to talking with them, getting to find out about their process, the artists that have influenced them, the challenges that they face, the triumphs that they get to experience, you know. I want to chat. I want to chat about art. So talking to fellow artists sounds like a good way to do it to me. Now that we've concluded our lovely slideshow of art news, that means that I can get going over to my game so stick with me here for just a second i'm gonna get that launched oh i forgot there was one more piece of news that i didn't that i received after i had finished the slideshow so it didn't make it in there but apparently there in the nft world there was a hack uh, or an exploit over at OpenSea. OpenSea is one of the platforms where people can buy, sell, and display their NFTs. And apparently, some hackers discovered an exploit that allowed them to... Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, interesting user, for sharing that link there in the chat. Appreciate you. They found an exploit that allowed them to purchase an NFT at its original listing price. So a lot of these NFTs, they were listed at fractions of an Ethereum and are now worth like 300 Ethereum. So they are worth six figures. So if someone is able to sell it to themselves at a much, 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 much lower rate of what it was originally listed as, then they can turn around and sell it again uh, at its original, at its at its inflated price, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. We have now, like, I didn't have a whole lot of time to look into it. So what I would do is I would encourage you all to look into it on your own. Thank you again, an interesting user, for sharing that in the chat for us. Appreciate you. Uh, please go ahead and read up on that or just Google OpenSea hack. OpenSea is one word. And you know, look into it. So NFTs, still a really interesting topic, still a lot going on there. Slightly less secure. I mean, I guess they were always insecure, but now feeling less secure. So just be wary if you are deciding to venture into that world. Just... Just step lightly is what I would say. If you are an artist trying to mint your art and make it into an NFT, go ham. But if you're someone who wants to invest in NFTs because you think you can make money doing it, step lightly, my friends. That's the only advice I can give as someone with minimal research spent on the topic. I do hope to actually bring in some folks who are more expert than me on the topic to interview them for the channel so stay tuned for that not today but you know make sure you're following the channel make sure you're following me on instagram so that you stay up on what the upcoming content is going to be all about and any changes to the schedule that might happen thanks for watching this video i put all of the links down in the description so that you can check them out in your own time remember if you want to chat with me while i deliver this content live make sure to follow me on twitch twitch.tv ruthfulla 
And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel to help me grow the artsy farts community.